a very warm welcome to you to our worship from St Mary Rob Boncini. My name is Nick Lines. I'm the rector here at St Mary's uh, and it's Sunday the 13th of September. Some of you will be worshipping in church at either 9 or 10.45 today or at home at any time from 9 o'clock through the coming week I guess. It's great to be able to welcome you. Uh, we are planning to continue having services at 9 o'clock and 10.45 10 each week at St Mary's. Uh, last week we had one at 9.45 uh, and uh, it was pretty full. So uh, we felt that in order to ensure that people could get in, that we would hold two services. Um, we may well come back to you and ask you to uh, let us know in advance which one you plan to be at and ask you to commit to be at that particular service in order that we can manage uh, the numbers at each service. But uh, we'll let you know about that. Uh, our annual parochial church meeting happens next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. Uh, that's the 20th of September, after the service in church, after the uh, 10.45 service. The electoral roll is on the notice board, um, but uh, we're only allowed to let 30 people into that uh, annual meeting. Uh, it's not a service of worship and consequently uh, the government's guidance on meetings within uh, religious buildings uh, applies and therefore we're only allowed to have 30 people. So please, uh, could you let me know if you plan to come? Call me or e email me and I will write down the first 30 uh, positive responses I get. We're going to do our best to also stream it so that you can uh, see it from home even if uh, you aren't able to be there. Our boiler, uh, the boiler has packed up and uh, we're looking for options uh, as to how we uh, either replace it or install a more environmentally friendly way of keeping people warm. Uh, if you've got a good understanding of the issues involved in this, please volunteer to join our new working party to advise the PCC. Speak to me, email me if you think you can help with that. We'd be really pleased to have you on board. I'll say a bit more about that later. The Food Collective reopens uh, in the Church Hall on Thursday the 24th of September. Uh, it's open midday till two. If you think you could uh, help or you'd like to be involved and you haven't already uh, uh, said so, then please do let me know. Uh, if you've uh, still got a response to give to your count, to the count your blessings uh, questionnaire, the project, please do let me have it as soon as possible. It's been really good and uh, exciting to read how God has blessed some of you uh, over the years. Uh, we've got tea on Zoom at four o'clock this afternoon, that's the 13th of September, four o'clock, uh, and also uh, we have a prayer meeting on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Tuesday evening, the 15th of September. Uh, if you'd like to come to either of those meetings, the uh, ID number is the same. It's Zoom 828-5172-7992. That's 828-5172-7992. Now going to turn to our worship. Uh, so please take either the printed service sheet or the uh, service sheet that you have on the screen. Please do respond with the words that are in bold, but only respond in your hearts if you're in church. In, if you're in the church building, we have to ask you not to speak out your uh, responses. And when we come to the uh, songs, not to sing um, in order to reduce the chances of infection. Let's be still as we come to the call to worship. Come to the God who knows us, to the God who created our being, to the God who knows our frailty, to the God who loves and cherishes us beyond measure. Come as you are and worship God. We pray together. Lord God, help us to understand how good it feels to forgive and be forgiven. Help us to remember that you forgave us again 
and again. Amen. We're now going to uh, have our first hymn, uh, Lord, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind. So now we come to our two Bible readings. Uh, the first reading is going to be read by Ruth Slade. So thank you, Ruth. The reading is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Accept the one whose faith is weak, without quarrelling, over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another, whose faith is weak, eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord 
and give thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for reading, Ruth. Our second reading is going to be read by Linda Nicholas. The second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35. The parable of the unmerciful servant. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who in wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him, cancelled the debt, and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Linda. Let's now affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And if you're in church, could I ask you please to do this uh, silently within your own heart. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has raised him on high 
and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So whoever said that following Jesus would be easy? Last week, we looked at the passage where Jesus told us that we were accountable to one another. And he gave us a means to challenge the behavior of other Christians who we felt were acting inappropriately. A friendly word, then involving witnesses if the guidance was ignored, to the point where the whole church eventually might be required to throw someone out if the person refused to listen. This week, though, Paul encourages us in Romans 14 to accept those whose faith is weak, not to pass judgment on them, to leave it to God. And in Matthew, Jesus reminds me that given God's mercy to me, I have to be very circumspect before I challenge someone else for letting me down. And if I'm going to do so, it must result in my complete forgiveness of them and doing all I can to love and support them uh, and restore them. So there's a, a paradox there, isn't there, where we are encouraged to uh, go to our brother and sister and put things right with them. And if they won't listen to involve witnesses from the rest of the church to ensure that what is right and true is discerned. And then on the other hand, we're told to be very careful not to uh, pass judgment. Somehow we have to hold those two things in balance, in tension. And it's difficult. It has been said that the church is full of hypocrites, but there's always room for more. We all fall short, don't we, when we try to live in God's ways. In any aspect of life we can get it right we can get one area right and another wrong and we saw a couple of weeks ago how one week peter was proclaiming jesus as the messiah the son of god and the next week he was rebuking him saying that he couldn't uh, die on the cross because that's not what he wanted him to do so one moment peter gets it very right the next moment he gets it very wrong and the same is true for each of us so we will each have areas of strength and areas where we're blinkered or blind and fail to get it right. One of the things that this month we're looking at is our care of creation. And there are those who are good at spotting ways that we can care for creation and whose lives are orientated uh, in a way to make sure that, the, that they sustain the, the world. They look for ways of doing that. But those who uh, have those strengths could be tempted sometimes to pass judgment on those who don't think so carefully about it. And maybe those who uh, aren't particularly good at it might be tempted from time to time to get grumpy with those who prick their consciences. You know, it's, we call to live in relationship with each other and to act and love with humility and to forgive when someone gets it wrong. As we watch the news or read the papers, we see people pointing the finger at each other, trying to pin the blame on someone else all the time. Politicians, scientists, the elderly blaming the young, the young blaming the elderly. White, black, we point the finger at each other. We've seen fingers pointed in every direction in the media in recent weeks. And of course, pointing is dangerous. If I point the finger of blame at you, I need to remember there are always three fingers pointing back at me. The point of Jesus' amazing story here is that God has been so immensely generous to you and me with his forgiveness and grace. There's no room for us to pass judgment on anyone else. The moment the servant demands something from someone who owes them, they've lost sight of how enormously God has forgiven them. So yes, we are called to keep one another to account, but always with a sense of sadness and trepidation 
when we have to challenge someone, doing it out of love. We have to remember that I sin just as much, maybe more, than any person I might see fault with. That doesn't mean I shouldn't pray for them, shouldn't plead with them to see sense if they're doing something stupid. But it does mean that I must always do it, knowing that all the time God knows me and I am no better. So in the end, judgment only comes from God. And God sees each person and each of us has to give an account of our actions to God alone. In the meantime, we're called to 77 or 70 times 7 forgiveness. Once you've forgiven someone this many times, I think the point Jesus is making is it becomes a habit. You're not going to count. Ah, we've reached time 78. So no forgiveness this time. Pay up. That's not what Jesus intends. What he's saying is, Forgive once and then forgive again a second time and then a third time. And, you know, keep on giving up to 77 times. And by then you'll have lost count. And you'll be in the habit of doing it. And that's where he wants us to be. Forgiving freely. Thank you to Amanda, who each week uh, racks her brain and comes up with a uh, uh, an amazing idea or two for uh, our children to engage with. Thank you for the resources again this week. We've got a heart which uh, uh, is to remind us that we've been forgiven by God and uh, Amanda's written on it, forgiving God, thank you. And then uh, we're encouraged to write the sins we need for forgiveness for. So I've written a couple of things I have problems with here that I'm slow to forgive. And that I sometimes abuse the world, uh, the creation. I act thoughtlessly. Now, I'm trying to get these things better and to get these things right and to be more aware of when I step out of line and to put myself right. So I've been praying about this and asking forgiveness. And the point is that I am forgiven. And uh, the marvellous thing about this is if you, because it's shiny and I've used a whiteboard marker, I can rub it out because God forgives and takes away my sin. God's grace and forgiveness is immense. We've also been given uh, a uh, forgiveness mobile to make uh, and it says I always have a forgiving heart. Matthew 18 21 to 35 that's the overall message of the uh the story that we've just read and oops. and uh here we've got uh some words forgive yeah. forever forget and do it for jesus um so thank you for that uh and uh do color yours in and if uh, you can find a way of posting them on uh, i'll put i'll put uh, mine on uh Facebook and if you can post uh, yours in the comments that'd be great fun. But the point of all this is that having been forgiven by God it's totally crazy for me or you to refuse to forgive someone else. As a church uh, we face a challenge and it's when we face challenges that sometimes we uh, don't treat each other with the care and respect we should. We've got a challenge that's coming up. Our old gas boiler has come to the end of its life. The Church of England has pledged itself to be carbon neutral by 2030. So that's a huge challenge. So the obvious time to try and find a way of heating the church that doesn't uh, spoil the planet is now. One of the things we've uh, thought about is we could install under pew, under pew heaters, which use much less energy because they heat only the space where we sit. And the problem with the existing, the old heating system is the 
gas boiler with uh, radiators just pumps masses of heat, which rises and heats the roof space. But if you have the, the heat just coming at you where you're sitting, we're more likely to be warm and it will actually use a lot less fuel. And we can use electricity, which, uh, as we know, can be generated in a renewable way. So there are challenges and opportunities, but whatever we do, whatever we do is going to be uh, expensive and it's going to take quite a lot of work to plan and put in place. So please do pray for a group as we work to try and put that right. We're called to pray to find solutions to these issues, which display our concern for the world, for the poor, for the vulnerable, as we look through issues like this. Burning carbon threatens to flood some of the poorest and most vulnerable communities in the world. How dare we shrug and ignore that warning? But the alternative will take time and money. How can we afford it? Wherever we stand on any issue, environmental issues I'm talking about right now, but it could be any issue, Paul's advice is good. Accept the one whose faith is weak. I may think that someone else's faith is weak, but it could always be mine that is weak, and it is if I'm passing judgment on them. So let's not judge one another's attitudes, but let's have honest, frank conversation within the context of God's immense forgiveness and grace towards each of us. This is how God's kingdom breaks into the world, how people who don't know Jesus see what a difference he has made to a group of very ordinary, sin-prone and sometimes stupid people. We want to live differently to the way we see behavior in the media. Will you commit to working with us, to leading us in the way that we're called to go? Will you stand as church warden? If you want to know what's involved, speak to Des or to me or to other people who've done it, to Richard Kimber or um, Graham Happe. Standing as a church warden automatically puts you on the PCC. You could just stand for the PCC. It's the church council. We have three seats uh, coming up for election and two casual vacancies. Uh, so the three seats are elected for three years, but the two casual vacancies are actually only until next year. And, next, uh, and the meeting's normally in the spring, so that will just be till the spring. So if you're unsure about it, you could just try it by standing for one of the casual vacancies and you'd be free to stand down or stand again, if you liked, in the spring. The other uh, thing that you can be elected to, body you can be elected to, is the Deanery Synod. And this is elected every three years. And this year, 2020, is one of the years where we do elect a Deanery Synod. It's where the whole of the Church of England in Swindon meet together four times a year. Each church has representatives. We have two representatives, uh, two spaces on the Deanery Synod this year, uh, for the next three years. If we elect you to the Deanery Synod, you would also be on the Parochial Church Council, the PCC, automatically. If you're in church, there are printed nomination forms. Please do take one and get it uh, signed, get yourself nominated and seconded by someone. Give the form back to Des and he'll make sure that I get it. Uh, if you're at home and not able to get to church, uh, there is a link in the email I sent out. Uh, whereby you can download the nomination form uh, and I'll put those links beneath this video on YouTube too. Uh, so you can get the form, you'll still need to get um, it signed eventually and, and back to me. But if you send me an email saying, uh, with um, attaching the form that uh, has been sent out and, and tell me that you are, have read the form in its, in completion, in, in its completeness and that you are happy that you satisfy the requirements, then I can accept that as a nomination, uh, providing you've been nominated by two people. And uh, if you email it to me, I can accept it and we will then take the paper later. So 
let's work together as God's people and please to get as involved as you can we'd love to have you on board in the church council as church warden or, or in the deanery synod please do pray about your response to this opportunity to be involved we're going to turn to God now, uh, recognising uh, our need of his forgiveness and the way that he does forgive us. So let's confess our sins. Again, the responses to this, please do, if you're in church, say them uh, silently in your heart to God. Lord of the living and Lord of the dead, we are conscious of our sin. We are weak in faith quarrelsome in nature and there is no health in us when we deny the science of climate change enlighten us when we continue to pollute our earth convict us when we exploit creation chastise us when we fail to cherish the earth, our fragile home, change us. When we fail to love the poor and oppressed, forgive us. Give us time, O oh God, even at this late hour to change and to turn away from destruction and back to you. God is the fount of all mercy and through the life, death and new life of Jesus Christ has shown us how to live, calling us to renewed action and commitment. Through the ministry of the church, may you receive pardon, peace and wisdom that you may use your time well, be filled with grace and help to renew the earth. Amen. And now we're going to pray for the world as we turn to our intercessions there is a, a response here the response is hear us stand with fears and need and walk with us father we lift before you the world the beautiful planet that you've created and we thank you for it thank you for calling us to live responsibly giving us responsibility to care for this planet. So we pray that you take, help us, your people, to take this responsibility seriously and give Christians, the church, courage to speak out and to act in ways that sustain all that you have created. God, who makes us with the earth Let's now turn to our intercessions. You'll see there is a, a response. The response is hear us, stand with our fears and needs and walk with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the world that you have created. Thank you for its beauty, for all that there is that you provide for us. Help us to take our responsibility to care for it seriously. And we pray that as your church, your people, we would speak out and be courageous in the way we, we act and encourage others to live according to your ways. Hear us as we stand with fears and needs and walk with us. Father, we Pray for our global and national leaders. We pray that you would help them to walk in ways that are just and right and lawful. We pray that you would give them integrity and honesty. We pray for all the negotiations that are taking place about global trade, negotiations involving the UK, and those involving other nations and the EU. We pray that in the midst of all this, we would be concerned for 
the earth that you've created and for those who are vulnerable and weak. We respond, hear us, stand with our fears and needs and walk with us. Pray for those who are sick and in silence, just lift before God those who are on your heart. We pray for your healing, that you would meet people's needs and that you would be glorified in the midst of their sickness. We respond, hear us, stand with our fears and needs and walk with us. Let's now say together the prayer that uh, Jesus has taught us. But again, if you're in church, please do respond uh, silently. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to sing a song of praise now. And thank you to Ruth and Maria Slade for recording this for us. Again, in church, please don't sing out loud.
Now we come to our final blessing. May the one to whom every knee shall bow and every tongue praise enfold you in loving kindness. May the one who is nailed to a tree for challenging the powers give you grace to challenge the lies of this age. May the one who sustains creation inspire such love in you that you remain unsatisfied until the earth is healed. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love now and always. Amen. Just to remind you that we have uh, tea today on Zoom at four o'clock and prayer on Tuesday evening at eight. The meeting ID for both of those is 828 5172 That's 828 5172 May God bless you and be with you today.